I just wanted to give you guys an update in case you were wondering, you probably have heard by now. It's the big news of the video and that is uh, I am moving to Los Angeles in three weeks. That's why I haven't uploaded any more vlog footage from JTF Texas. This is uh, Josh Green's vlog, new studio setup, take one. You know, we've been on this journey of behind the scenes with Wildfish JTF. Asher's bread, Tasher, the fake beef drama between Abigail and Ashton, even though they're best friends. Timing on sit down your rock in the boat. The fact that they all stood up and sat in the air. And the crescendo on Rollum. All these things that were gonna culminate and it's like, are we gonna be able to pull this off? We did like, what, 11 rehearsals before we performed? Which is not a lot at all. I had this really cool idea of the day of the performance. I would teleport from Wildfish and just arrive at JTF. That was gonna be super cool. The Mallory Bechtel, she was on Broadway in Dear Evan Hansen as Zoe. Why should I play this game of pretend? We had like an interview with her and Christy, which is gonna be super dope. I had like all these things planned. I couldn't do a single vlog about it because I lost, I did not lose my phone. My phone was eaten by an HVAC system at the Smart Financial Center <gasps> before any of my footage uploaded to the cloud. <gasps> so like all of it's lost, it's on that phone. It's just plastic. It's really just... That's why I haven't uploaded any more vlog footage from JTF Texas. So the backstory is I just bought an iPhone 12 Pro Max that I was going to use because of business. And so I decided I would just pay for the whole thing outright uh, as a business expense and an investment into upping my game because the camera on it is so good. In fact, this vlog is filmed with that iPhone 12. I go to the Apple store. They're like, you should totally get the theft and loss because no matter what happens, at least you'll get a phone. So I did. And then they helped me set it up, which is great because um, I just want it done correctly. So fast forward 40 days to where we're at JTF. I put my phone in a cup holder in front of me. Somehow it bounces out. There's like a little slit in the, um, in the flooring like a big slit, my 12 Pro Max, which is not a small phone, bounces out and gets engulfed by, eaten by this thing. So I reach in there, I can't really feel anything. I contact JTF staff and then uh, Smart Financial Center, give them the section, they're like, oh, we can't access that. So there's nothing we can do. And I was like, nothing you can do? That makes no sense. So I'm thinking, I just need to wait a couple days and they're gonna figure this thing out. I'm without a phone all week for like five days. I didn't realize how much I use it for everything. I use it to listen to music in my car. Like who listens to the radio anymore? I use it to navigate. I use GPS all the time. So I had to drive around Houston without GPS. That weekend, everyone who went to JTF will tell you like Josh missed us every time we like change stuff. There was no way to let me know, hey, we went to someone's house or we're running late or we decided we wanna to go to Starbucks. <sighs> and I was in the middle of a job interview and so for all I know, they're trying to reach out to me. I'm not getting back to them. And they're thinking I'm not interested. So fast forward, I contact them back and they're like, oh yeah, there's no way we can get to that. It's happened before. Well, I need that footage. It's irreplaceable. Is there anything you can do? And I'm trying to offer them non-traditional solutions. They're thinking, oh, there's no latch or door built in. Okay, lower a thing with like a GoPro so you can see what's going on have a little crane that grabs it, you know, like an extended arm thing. Think of some solution. Have you ever heard of an engineer? Like that's what engineers do. They're like, they ghetto rig solutions. Anyways, they're like, nothing we can do. So then I'll go to the Apple store, decide to do the insurance claim. There's one stipulation with lost or stolen. Find my iPhone has to be on. Now on all my devices, find my iPhone is on. Like I know about that whether I have insurance or not, because I just want to be able to track it like I lose my stuff all the time. Well, even though the Apple store set it up and didn't turn find my iPhone on for whatever freak reason, I was held liable. I literally went to you guys to make sure it was done correctly. There should be some guarantee, you know, like, oops, I can't believe we set up your phone and didn't put, turn my iPhone on. That's bad on us. We should take responsibility. They said, no, there's nothing we can do. Well, you know, the Smart Financial Center has a bad building design and it's happened before and they didn't patch it you know like you could just put grills over your vents that way things don't fall in since they have a history of doing that so I think it's fair to ask them to pay for it so I email the guy there and say hey I think you should pay for my, my device because Apple won't cover it and they just stop responding 
even though I just paid full price for my iPhone 12 Pro Max, I had to pay full price again. No, that's a lot of damage. To have to spend that much money within like 40 or 50 days is a big deal especially for someone who's saving up to move to LA eventually. Eight into my savings. And so in that moment, I'm just sitting here, I'm fuming, right? This isn't fair, are you kidding me? No one's accepting responsibility for how they drop the ball, but I have to pay the price for it. And these are big corporations. The Smart Financial Center has insurance. Apple has trillions of dollars. So when either of them mess up, why should I, a small man, little guy, have to pay for their mistake. And that's what I wanna kinda of highlight on. It's not the best mindset. Do I have a case? Yeah. I mean, I think it's fair to say that that wasn't fair or right and that neither corporation showed very good customer service. But it highlighted a couple of important lessons I have to constantly be reminded of. Now, most of my uh, audience here on my YouTube channel are gonna be high schoolers and collegians. Um, with a couple of middle schoolers that watch. I feel this lesson is very timely for you guys because they prepare you for the real world. We live in an ideal world to where it's a very controlled environment and we are told very clearly, do the right thing and good things will happen to you. And without being told the full picture, we assume if bad things happen, then I must have done something wrong. What did I do wrong? Just tell me what I did wrong. Dude, you're doing it right now. And a lot of times it is that case. Why'd you make bad grades? Oh, you didn't study enough. Why did someone so break up with you? Oh, I was a bad boyfriend or girlfriend. You're about to go to college in the real world and things just are completely different. So the first lesson it taught me was number one, you're never guaranteed tomorrow. I didn't back up my videos and photos to the iCloud because it was full and take care of it and then make sure I have a backup or at least if I can't back it up there, back it up to my external drives, which I have for this very purpose. Well, guess what? I don't have the footage now. Uh, that's the biggest loss to me because I can't get those, those captured memories back. So you're not guaranteed tomorrow. What does that mean? That means there's a lot of things, if you know about them today, <laughs> take care of them today. And I'm coming to you guys as the biggest procrastinator ever. Oh, I have two weeks to finish this and it's due on Monday. I'm up all night Sunday and finishing up Monday at 4 a.m. and complaining to everybody. Oh man, school at college is so hard. Man, I just really had to like stay up all night to finish this assignment. It's because I ignored it for two weeks. The older you get, <laughs> I'm turning into my parents. The older you get, the more you realize you're not guaranteed tomorrow. Don't put off tomorrow what you can take care of today. That was one lesson I took from this. Lesson number two, this is, this is the main lesson, this is the hardest one to me. Life's not fair. We live in a mindset that things should be fair, and when they're not, we freak out. Is it fair for me to expect Apple or like the Smart Financial Center to do something about this situation? They're not gonna do anything. So like, that's life. Now, could I try to escalate this and like threaten to sue or go to the newspaper and say, hey, there's a story here and like try to make a big deal of it? I could. Is it worth the stress and effort though? No. And that was one of the things I had to do. I had to learn to let go. But I was able to let go because I realized life's not fair. This is really important for especially y'all in high school and college. Because you're going to use this phrase a lot with your parents or even with like teachers. You're going to say, ah, this happened. That's not fair. And you have all the reasons in your head why it's not fair for you personally, you know, and if the other person just understood, you know, they would change things and you have all this, this energy and angst to try to like change the world and like move mountains and move heaven and earth just to like have your way because it's fair. The truth is life's not fair. Now I come from a very Christian background. And so for what Christians believe, this makes sense as part of our worldview is that God created a beautiful, perfect world and creation and then sin entered the world and it started breaking down. It's similar to thinking of uh, a clockmaker making a clock and the clock still runs, but it's getting old. It's breaking down. Uh, parts are getting worn down or, you know, like maybe it's starting to run slow. Um, the gears are starting to go out. The springs aren't, are losing their their rigidity. And so the clock's starting to like slowly fall apart. It's still working. It's still functioning as a clock, 
but it's not optimal and it's like expiring. That makes sense from that lens of what we live in. But even the Christian worldview, you're taught, oh yeah, be a good person, do the right thing and you'll be rewarded, right? And we just have that worldview and it's drilled into us. But reality is, even when you do the right thing for the right reason, you don't always come out on top. You don't always get the W, you don't get the win. Sometimes you have to accept the loss even though you did the right thing. That's not fair. If you go through life demanding and expecting everything to be fair, you're going to freak out when it's not, when reality hits you. I'm sure a lot of you guys have your life game plan. I mean, I know in the back of your head, there's a part of you that says, oh yeah, this is just like a loose game plan. I'm sure it won't happen. But it's what motivates you and drives you. It's I'm gonna graduate high school, do great. I'm gonna go to college. I'm gonna graduate college. I know exactly what my career is gonna be, or I think I wanna know what my career is gonna be. I'm gonna be happy. I'm gonna make good money. I'm gonna marry and we're gonna be happy and have 2.3 kids and two golden doodles and a house with a white picket fence in a good neighborhood. And then I'm gonna have kids and those kids are gonna be happy and I'm gonna do right. And they're gonna, we're gonna have a big family. Everything's gonna be awesome. That's good. Like have those goals and aspirations. But during that journey, you're gonna hit so many roadblocks that aren't even your fault. There's so many roadblocks you're gonna hit that are your fault. I should probably put that out there first. But on top of that, you're gonna hit obstacles and roadblocks that aren't your fault. And if you think life's supposed to be fair and when you do the right thing, you do everything right, it should just work out and you should have like smooth sailing and it doesn't, you're going to. Oh, There's so many times that you're gonna do the right thing and it works out and it's great and you're gonna feel that like good feeling. And there's other times you're gonna do the right thing and it's not gonna work out. And you're gonna be like, what's, I don't understand what's going on. what I do wrong? But that's life. Now we've talked about that's life and I made everyone depressed. So why should I even care? Why should I make forth any effort? When you do the right thing and you still take a loss or you don't get rewarded, but you still do it, that builds character. And that's the most important thing about a person, in my humble opinion. I'm sure your parents, you know, they have their own idea for you. But after talking to your parents, I think they would all agree with me. The most important thing for each of you individually is the kind of person you become. Because if you become someone very successful and popular, but you're a terrible person on the inside, I don't think your parents are gonna be very happy with you. But beyond that, I don't think you'll be very happy with you. Wow, you're really good at making money or, or you're really good at getting good grades or you're really popular or hey, you're in Hollywood doing really good. But what kind of person are you? Are you the kind of person who laughs when people stumble? Are you the kind of person who gossips and talks about it, about people behind their backs? Are you the person who like lies and cheats and steals just to get ahead? I mean, is that the kind of person you wanna be? And that should be the question you should ask yourself every day. What kind of person am I? Who do I want to be? So why should you attempt to do the right thing or do good in a broken world that uh, it's not perfect and you don't always get a reward or you don't always get a, a win, a W for doing the right thing? Why? Because it's the right thing to do. And it's who you are you wanna be. You are the product of your choices and environment. If you want to be a good person, you do the right thing no matter what, even at a loss. What's really cool is above being a good person, being a generous person. That kind of brings up the unofficial sponsor of this video, which is Wildfish Theater. The reason I say that is I don't really have a sponsor in case YouTube's like monitoring this, like, oh, you're getting paid ads. Let me just find a way the IRS hits you up. Whenever I had this deal with the phone and Christy heard it and um, was talking to me, it's like, what are you gonna do? And I told her, I'm just gonna have to pay for a new phone. There's no way I was gonna get a replacement phone. I was just gonna have to pay out of pocket for it. She came back to me a later time. Chrissy's gonna hate this, by the way, she watches this video because she likes to do things, especially like charity work and like private. So I'm totally exposing her right now. But basically Chrissy said, I wanna help you pay for a phone. I would like Wallfish to help you out. But why? Like, I appreciate that, but it's not your fault. You didn't do anything. She's like, I, it's not that I did anything wrong. She's like, I just feel bad that this happened and I feel like I need to do something about it. Um, it's not the first time this has happened with Christy. Christy's a very generous person in general. It's one of the reasons I love working at Wildfish. That really hurt financially to like have to pay for that phone twice. I was already like, oh, can I afford to pay out of pocket for this the first time? And I like crunched numbers. I was like, it's worth it. I'm up in my business game. I'll be able to do more professionally with it. Having to do it a second time, that was like, oh crap, I gotta eat ramen noodles for three months and like budget work extra contracts to make this up because I don't wanna go back into debt. 
her being generous was like a huge blessing, but relief because it was a reminder that I'm not in this alone and people care. And most of my audience watching this, y'all aren't people who are walking around like work jobs and have like big bank accounts. You can just dish out money, but you can be generous. There's some things that you can offer. You can offer your time. You can offer kind words. You can um, offer friendship. And that sounds silly, right? Or it sounds super lame. It's not. I moved and went to like eight different schools before I graduated high school. When you're in a new school, you start as an outsider. And it was people who like were nice to me and got to know me and invited me to hang out, invited me to sit with them at lunch that made going to all those different schools palatable. It wasn't, it was still hard, but it was like much more enjoyable. People that became my friends, like, hey, let's go to the mall. Let's go see a movie. When you want to come over, we're just going to come over and like watch a movie or play pool or whatever. I felt like I belonged and you can do that. Beyond being a good person who does the right thing for the right reason, even at a loss, go beyond that. Like find people that have needs. Oh, that person doesn't really have friends or that person was just, you know, talk bad about and just go over there and befriend them or just say a kind word to someone, buy someone breakfast or lunch or something. Oh, even better yet, do it to your parents. Dead serious. See, we always push our parents of like, give me, give me, give me, but you never give anything back to them. Your parents did not pay me to say that. I'm just being real with you guys. They would love that. What's interesting though is every time something unfair happens in life, there's always a silver lining. Now, if you've heard that said before, but let me give you three specific examples of things that were unfair, but then ended up being life-changing in a good way. Number one, Hurricane Harvey. So I'm, I'm like homeless, right? But out of that, first of all, generosity. So I had families at Wild Fish and at my church who like gave me literally money to help me out. I had families, you know, let me stay in their hotel suite while they were flooded too, or let me stay in their guest houses while I was trying to find a new home. Secondly, I got my dog. I got this guy from Hurricane Harvey. We were both flooded. I wouldn't have had him. Thirdly, I was in the middle of trying to make life work for me. And I had this like view of what I wanted to do in life and how it had to work. And I was getting frustrated because it wasn't working out. And then I started asking myself, you know, what do you want to do? And I was like, I've always wanted to be in LA and be an actor and write and be involved in movie making. If it wasn't for that horrible hurricane incident, then I would be still going down this path that I didn't really believe in, but I thought I was supposed to do. That's a big win in my book. Number two, that led to me moving to LA in 2019. But three or four months in, no, it was like five months in, COVID hit. And the entire world shut down. So here I am in Los Angeles, a very expensive city with no work. Oh, and my condo that was supposed to sell before I moved didn't sell. So I'm having to pay for this expensive condo downtown and expensive housing in LA. And I have no work. That's not fair, but it's what it was. And so I moved back to Houston and it just happened to work out great because then I started working at Wildfish and they needed help with video stuff. Well, ever since Hurricane Harvey, I started to switch my mindset away from like just music and things to video production. So those skills that I taught myself after Hurricane Harvey's incident helped me work with Wildfish and get their stuff done. And not only that, I then had a job doing what I love doing and in a way that I can get better at it. I got to see all my old students, how they've grown up and how cool they are. I honestly, y'all are the coolest. I wish I was that cool in high school. And then with this phone incident, it sucks. Like I'm still a little bitter about it, but I'm just, I'm moving on. I'm trying not to think about it. It was in the middle of me th working out, trying to move back to LA and get a job. And with me not having a phone, I was really able to like focus on it. For me, again, I'm a Christian. I'm a very spiritual person. So I was able to like talk to God about it and be completely transparent. Like, what are my intentions here? What am I really going for? Also insecurities, am I good enough for this job? I was running away from all that because I was so focused on making vlogs. And out of that comes big news. It's the big news of the video. And that is uh, I am moving to Los Angeles in three weeks yeah! and all that. I felt like was able to really get solidified because I lost my phone. I didn't lose my phone, you know what I mean? And now I'm moving to Los Angeles where I wanted to be and where I've been trying to aim for ever since I've moved here. It's, it's a silver lining. Yeah, I may have 
I had my phone here and had to pay a lot of money, but I got a mind shift, mind, yeah, mindset shift to where it was no longer about what is fair, what's right, but rather where am I going? Even when bad things happen to you, if you know where you're going, you just keep heading that direction. It may slow you down. It may cause you to pause for a season or two, but it doesn't stop your journey. It also tests you like, what are you made of? Like a lot of people say, oh, I want to be an actor, um, a pop star. I want to do this as a career. The moment someone tells them you're not good enough, the moment someone says no, the moment they have a bad audition, like maybe they just flat out fail and they suck for on a performance, they give up. Okay, do you really want to do this? Do you really feel like it's what you're supposed to do? Don't give up. Maybe you have an obstacle, don't have the money, don't have the connections. Okay, just keep going in that direction. There's no, there's no secret formula to success. Uh, if it was that easy, then we would all do the same thing and all succeed. Big faith move here because I have a job, I have a start date, I don't have anywhere to stay. So if you know anyone in Westlake, Topanga, Thousand Oaks, Agora Hills, anyone in that area that has a guest house they'd like to rent out to a guy with a dog at a discounted rate because um, I don't have $2,000 a month for rent, please let them know, connect them with me. That'd be, that'd be really awesome. My wild fish kids, my last shows are going to be the elephant piggy and the two little shop of horrors. And we're going to end it with a bank. And if you're not in them, come see the shows on Friday, August 13th, I think. Yeah. Friday the 13th. It's pretty dope. And say hi and bye. And we can, you know, cry. Not really. I don't want to cry. Even if you don't understand this fully right now, I'm just trying to plant seeds so that whenever life just gives you the L, that you're able to be like, oh yeah, Josh talked about this so I can be prepared for this moment and just be able to process it and keep going and know that it's not weird for you to do the right thing and it not work out. It's quite normal. Be a good person, be a generous person, and do it anyways because that's who you are on the inside. It's who you want to be if you're not. Everyone I know watching this vlog, I know them pretty well. Y'all are really good people. And I just want to encourage you so you're not discouraged and turn to the dark side. Oh, I want to tell y'all something really cool. I'm in the middle of um, almost finishing production on a short film I wrote that has one of our wild fish actresses in it, Daniela. And I'm gonna show you a little clip here to end this video. It's really rough on the audio. She does such a good job. Let me know what you guys think. All right, peace out. I don't call her that. I've never called her that. You always wear a rebellious type. Perhaps I should save the cleanup for later. You should clean it up now before someone slips and falls. So mom doesn't know you're here then? If she does, if she doesn't, what, you worried? It's only a matter of time, I suppose. Well, aren't you curious how I found you? Not really. I mean... Great Michael. What a top three. It a flat in London overlooking the Tower Bridge, decorated floor hall art, and now... This. It was on the sale Wayfair. Look, if you don't like the place, you don't have to stay. I prefer the place to myself anyways. <laughs> You really lost it, didn't you? You really lost your speed. <laughs>